HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the anchor desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports update. We'll take you to the Hopkinton Science and Engineering Fair, and Matt Clark will fill you in on upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, the Board of Selectmen approved the newest officer to the Hopkinton Police Department. Well, it's a pleasure to uh, introduce you to uh, Officer Stickney, or soon to be Officer Stickney, if I can get that consideration and a vote. Um, as mentioned in the uh, agenda, he is a 10-year veteran of the Sherbourne Police Department. Uh, he came out number one in our process by far, and he is going to be an excellent asset to our police department. His focus is on community policing over the past 10 years. He has a great background in technology and introducing uh, technology to the Sherbourne Police Department. I know for a fact that the chief is pissed because he's losing a great officer, but <laughs> it's our game. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to welcome aboard and, and uh, have him say a few words. Absolutely. Well, thank you for uh, having me tonight. Um, I have worked in the town of Sherbourne for uh, the last 10 years. Um, I started as a dispatcher there and uh, worked my way up to a police officer. And, uh, I've done quite a few things there. It's been a great experience. I've worked with some great people over there. But uh, you know, Hopkinton's always kind of been a second home to me. My family, uh, aunts and uncles, my father and my mother uh, grew up in town, and you know, always spent a lot of time in town. And uh, this was always a place that I wanted to be. And uh, I'm really happy to hopefully have the opportunity to be here. Excellent. Thanks for coming. Do we didn't do poach him or anything. You know, you know as selectmen, we're going to get in trouble like driving Garoppolo. through there, you know, <laughs> cutting from Dover, <laughs> cutting you through. Over. Okay, just want to make sure that we're not uh, poaching. And, and just to let you know a little more background, he's going to be uh, put into our uh, field training program, even though he has 10 years, he does things in Sherborne, but you gotta learn the Hopkinton way here. And his field training officer is uh, Arthur Schofield, and uh, he's gonna be, you know, he's got a few years on him, he'll be the teacher. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent, Mr. Cesari. I've heard a little bit about you. I hope all good things. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking with, uh, with someone on, on the force who works with you, and uh, he was telling me that he was prepared to sabotage you, other than the fact that he's going to benefit because he lives in Hopkinton. <laughs> you might know him, but we're your old neighbors. But uh, no, I've heard a lot of great things about you, and uh, welcome to Hopkinton, and we wish you the most success. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Well, Officer Stickney, we're delighted to have you come on board. And, uh, you know, as you know, uh, Hopkinton's been ranked right up there as one of the safest communities in Massachusetts. So you're coming to a great place, and we look forward to your helping us keep that ranking. Absolutely. And we're delighted to have you. Uh, hope you'll be happy here. <coughs> Hopkinton's way better than Sherbourne. <laughs> So I know you're Don't tell happy. them that. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Thank you. Well, <laughs> Mr. Stickney. Sir. I could, uh, I, this, so, <laughs> so, it's getting hot in here. I'm looking at, so I'm looking over your left shoulder, I'm looking at your father. So your father and I have been friends for a long, long time. He was my first youth football coach in Hopkinton with uh, Chief Emeritus Flannery. <laughs> um, so I know that there's a ton of pride in Hopkinton that goes through your family line. I could come up here and I could make you squirm. <laughs> and I've had requests from many people from I'm the department sure. that you're leaving to <laughs> make sure. you squirm. <laughs> if the, the sergeant that you work for <laughs> gives you two thumbs up and says clearly that it's our loss, 
and Hopkinton's gain. I know that sergeant very well. Compliments don't fall out of his mouth very often. They don't. He thought very highly of you. He still thinks very highly of you. I know between that recommendation, my interaction with you over the years, and the family lineage that we have, you're going to be a complete and total asset to our department. Our department is the pride of our town, and I think that by chiefly hiring people like you, we don't have to be the second loser. We're, we're ranked number three in the state. We might be able to jump up to the silver or the gold. So thank you for coming over. Thank you for vacating that town that you used to work in. Um, and this is just one more step of making Hopkins and great again. So congratulations. Do thank a good you very job. much. I know that you will. Thank you. That's as nice as you're ever going to get me to be. <laughs> wow. Unless I wouldn't you pull even me over. If you pull me over, it, I'll say sir to you. <laughs> but welcome aboard. I'm, from my heart, I'm glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Wow, I can't follow that one up. <laughs> I'm just going to say welcome. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Really, you know, after putting <clears throat> 10 years, you know, at, at, at your previous position, uh, it really must have taken a lot to come here, and we're really grateful that you did. Uh, Chief, good job. Good job last suing them and bringing them in. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you for very coming. much. Thanks for having. Thanks for your son. <laughs> so wait, 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 Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Hurd, you want to even verbalize this one? He's there. Sounds great. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> any, any, any nays, any abstentions? No. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank now you. we can do that. Okay. <laughs> It is playoff time, and this week, Hopkinton Hillers boys and girls basketball were in action. Here's a look at the highlights. On Monday, February 26th, the Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team hosted the Medway Mustangs in a first-round playoff game. It was a back-and-forth battle throughout the first three quarters. Hopkinton outscored Medway in the first 13-12, but the second quarter was 17-12 in favor of Medway. The third quarter was in favor of Hopkinton, 15-14, which made it a 43-40 Medway lead heading into the final eight minutes. In the fourth quarter, the Hopkinton offense struggled from the field, and Medway outscored the Hillers 19-5 and took the game 62-45. Ben McKenzie scored a game-high 16 points for the Hillers, but it wasn't enough as the Hillers end the season with 11 wins and 10 losses. Medway advances to an away game versus Marlboro. There is certainly a lot to be optimistic about for the Hillers boys basketball team. Next season, they will return 10 players from the 13-man roster. On Tuesday, February 27th, the Hopkinton Hillers girls picked up a decisive home win versus Holliston 52-27. Ivy Goglin dominated the low post and racked up 17 points and 17 rebounds. Lily Morningstar also tallied 12 points. The fourth seeded Hillers advance and will host fifth seeded Medfield on Friday, March 2nd. The TVL large champion Hopkinton Lady Hillers now have 17 wins and four losses overall. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll take you to the Hopkinton Science and Engineering Fair for an extended look at some of the projects and the prize winners. Plus, Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. This week on The Gathering, Terry Malisi 
kicks it up big time to make a very special appreciation gathering for the Hopkins and Police and Firefighters. Just with these ingredients, the peppers, the onions. Oh, amazing, huh? Okay, so what do we have in here right now? Welcome back to HCAM News. This past week, Hopkinton High School hosted their annual science and engineering fair. As usual, the projects were very creative and informative. Here is an extended look at this year's fair. Hopkinton High School hosted their annual science and engineering fair. Many were in attendance as students showed off their projects. Project here about? Um, it's about jewelry and nickel and allergies. <laughs> um, we're both allergic to nickel and we want to find a solution to that problem. Yeah, we use nail polish, wax, toothpaste, and nickel guard to coat our nickel pieces with to see which one would work the best. The one that worked the best is nail polish, and nail polish is also the most affordable option as it completely covered all the nickel. Alright, and how long did this take you? About a month. The project was the effects of timing on student performances. I had two groups, and uh, group A, I said nothing about timing. And group B, I did tell them they were timed. Uh, group B, which was timing, did significantly worse, uh, interestingly enough. And group A, group A, which was untimed, did better. Alright, and uh, how long did this take you to do? Uh, well, both uh, classes, both two different classes, their same grades, uh, were tested on the same day. So, all data was received in about a day. So. She has set 
an incredibly high bar for what it means to be a mentor and a science fair director. So we would like to honor her and say thank you for creating such a special program and also have her know how much it means to us long after we leave the, the doors of Hawking High School that that kind of mentor and that kind of teacher has an impact for many, many years. So we want to say a big thanks to Mrs. L. times in the project room after school, so we know you'll enjoy reading about those. She remembers almost every project she's ever worked with, so hundreds of students at this point, so it's very, very special to be here. Today. Well, thank you so much, thank and I, I could not have passed the torch to better people. I'm so proud um, to have them play a role in this, and um, today was fantastic. I know, personally, the hours and time it takes for you guys to support the students and give them these opportunities and to be part of this community for years. Um, and the support of the town has just been my blessing and I feel like I should be announcing my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> The top three projects took home a prize. Here is a look at the top three. We run into challenges and we have to persevere. We have to show that grit to get through it. And so in Val's honor and to say thank you for all the years of service, we've decided to come up, or we've come up with a new award for this year. And so this is the Valerie Lichtansky Award for Perseverance. And we're giving this every year to a project that may not have scored the highest, and it's not about how you did today during the fair, but it's about the perseverance and grit you showed throughout the process. And that's what makes someone a really good scientist, a really good student, and someone that we're excited about their potential. So we'd like to honor um, a team that has shown this throughout the years. There are multiple year science fair participants. They've shown that grit, that determination, and whenever they run into a challenge, just like Val, they have a great attitude and a great work ethic to try and get through that. So we're really proud to honor for the first time, and there'll be a plaque downstairs in the science hallway with their names, Sophie Marks and Amanda Hansen for the effects of plants grown hydroponically with insecticide. the intelligent cloud-based medication dispensing and scheduling system to help prevent and deter accidental overdosing. Our society faces a serious opioid epidemic. In 2016, 64,000 people died as a result of opioid overdoses. According to a major news organization, more people died in one year due to opioid overdoses than the amount of people that died in the 20-year period of the Vietnam War. And we went, when we read the statistic, we were shocked. So we decided to do more research into the underlying cause. What we found out is that the number one cause of accidental and unintentional death in the United States is due to opioid overdosing. And that surpasses the amount of people that die as a result of car accidents. 
In Massachusetts alone, over 11,000 people died solely from accidental and unintentional overdoses. Unfortunately, these problems are also prevalent amongst the elderly. A staggering 40 to 70% of all seniors stray from their daily medication cycle. Because of all these issues, the amount of deaths related to un unintentional op opioid overdosing has quadrupled since 1999. So in order to solve the problem of accidental opioid addiction, uh, Rohan and I created a hardware and software uh, system uh, which so aims to solve the uh, amount of people uh, the problems for a lot of people who are uh, becoming addicted by accidentally taking more of their prescription medication. Nearly 80% of these people uh, who ended up dying because of opioid addiction uh, were initially prescribed uh, opioids by a physician. So Rohan and I re-engineered the hardware of a pill bottle, so now our pill bottle can now store uh, multiple different types of medication. And this pill bottle is connected through the cloud uh, to a mobile application uh, which has a patient portal and a caretaker portal. The caretaker portal uh, would be used by someone who is trusted like a doctor taking care of a patient. Uh, and the patient portal allows the patient to manage the amounts of medication in uh, the bottle and allows them to dispense uh, medication uh, using logic uh, built into the software. Uh, once the uh, application is active, the patient can simply click a button and dispense a pill, uh, going through some very complex validation. And once this is done, the medication will dispense. The system also has uh, checks in place so that if medication is being dispensed too frequently, uh, it'll actually stop dispensing medication and will notify the caretaker uh, that uh, there might be some abuse going on and the caretaker can actually step in and prevent further medication from being dispensed. Wow, excellent. How long did this take you? Uh, we've been working on this since September. Very good. All right, well, nice job, guys, and congratulations. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. The top 12 projects received a chance to advance to a regional tournament. Here is a look at the top 12. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, March 2nd at 5 p.m., local artists gathered to share their poetry, writing, and music on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. At 7 p.m., the Hillers take on the Medfield Warriors in the second game of the winter playoff season, live on HCAM Ed. And at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with Liz Jeffress, the executive director of the Bay Path Humane Society, on a new episode of Hopkin Coffee Break. On Monday, March 5th at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod talks with members of the Hopkinton Historical Society about the many historical monuments around the town common on a new episode of Senior View. On Wednesday, March 7th at 7 p.m., Marge and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. And on Thursday, March 8th at 8 p.m., Terry Belisi puts together an appreciation dinner for Hopkinton's police and firefighters on a brand new episode of The Gathering. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Ice Hockey vs. Dober Sherbin playoff games will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.
On Monday, February 26th, the Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team hosted the Medway Mustangs in a first-round playoff game. It was a back-and-forth battle throughout the first three quarters. Hopkinton outscored Medway in the first 13-12, but the second quarter was 17-12 in favor of Medway. The third quarter was in favor of Hopkinton, 15-14, which made it a 43-40 Medway lead heading into the final eight minutes. In the fourth quarter, the Hopkinton offense struggled from the field, and Medway outscored the Hillers 19-5 and took the game 62-45. Ben McKenzie scored a game-high 16 points for the Hillers, but it wasn't enough as the Hillers end the season with 11 wins and 10 losses. Medway advances to an away game versus Marlboro. There is certainly a lot to be optimistic about for the Hillers boys basketball team. Next season, they will return 10 players from the 13-man roster. On Tuesday, February 27th, the Hopkinton Hillers girls picked up a decisive home win versus Holliston 52-27. Ivy Goglin dominated the low post and racked up 17 points and 17 rebounds. Lily Morningstar also tallied 12 points. The fourth-seeded Hillers advance and will host fifth-seeded Medfield on Friday, March 2nd. The TVL large champion Hopkinton Lady Hillers now have 17 wins and four losses overall. <laughs> it's our game. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to welcome aboard and, and uh, have them say a few words. Absolutely, well, thank you for uh, having me tonight. Um, I have worked in the town of Sherburne for uh, the last 10 years. Um, I started as a dispatcher there and uh, worked my way up to a police officer. And uh, I've done quite a few things there. It's been a great experience. I've worked with some great people over there. But uh, you know, Hopkinton's always kind of been a second home to me. My family, uh, aunts and uncles, my father and my mother uh, grew up in town and you know, always spent a lot of time in town. And this was always a place that I wanted to be. And uh, I'm really happy to hopefully have the opportunity to be here. Excellent. Thanks for coming. Do we do, do you poach him or anything? You know, you know, as selectmen, we're going to get in trouble driving through there. <laughs> <laughs>